Hello everyone, I'm Rishi Passad. Welcome back to Racing Weekly, a podcast and YouTube show brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. There is so much good racing going on at the moment. We've just had some wonderful stuff. We've got great stuff to look forward to this weekend. As usual, on my left, Steve Ryder, who's been in great tipping form so far on this new series of Racing Weekly. We'll come to that in just a moment. No pressure then, therefore on our guest this week, Johnny Ward, who's made the journey over from Ireland. And Johnny, welcome to the show. Welcome to our new studio. So cool. It's great to be here. Yeah, near the BBC studios as well. Yes, yes, yes there we near are. the old television centre. There we are. Yeah, uh, and appropriate, really, because, you know, national podcast that we are now. Well, international, this is this. International podcast. This is this, yeah. We've uh, we've got a lot to get through. I mean, the national hunt, it felt like the national hunt season started almost at the weekend. Proper winter ground. Even at Wexford, there were good races that kind of went under the radar. Yeah. So we've loads to get through, yeah. Uh, has there been a horse that has really struck a chord with you so far this season? There have been a few, uh, like I'll talk about on the show. I'll, I'll mention on Tubber for Henry de Bromhead, who he only won a maiden hurdle, but he won a slowly run maiden hurdle. You're well, the second person on the show this series to mention that horse. Yeah. You're kind of speculating, but like you look at his, his physique and uh, he came for the point to point field. But he won a two-mile slowly run maiden hurdle, which is kind of strange. A lot of the maiden hurdles in Ireland, like, they're so uncompetitive in terms of people actually getting into them. But um, let's be clear about it as a horse I'm going to give. Uh, I was at Cork when he won, and he kind of didn't really reach, like, massive heights over hurdles. But we'll talk about the mighty Tom form maybe being let down a bit at Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. But he destroyed him, and the way he jumped... He's going to the Drinmore. Uh, I'm actually quite excited about him, and Gavin Cromwell is the... If, if not the pretender to the throne, he's the pretender to the pretenders to the throne of <laughs> Willie Mullins. He's yeah. the one that's really expanding. He's spent a lot of money on a field beside his yard to expand and to get another gallop in. 40% flat, 60% national hunt. He's had like Royal Ascot winners, Cheltenham mm -hmm. um, championship winners, and he's hungry for more. Um, and I think he's very interesting this season as we saw at Cheltenham. Yeah, his horses are flying, mm -hmm. uh, and especially here in the UK. Uh, Steve, as I mentioned, um, another good week for you on the tipping front. Uh, so there's some expectations now. Yeah, nice performances, um, good races to look ahead to, and a few talking points with regards to jockey bookings as well. Um, yeah, Gavin put on Nontober up for, in his 10 sort of to follow on the show last week. We received really nice comments around the show. Um, so thank you, everyone, to, um, that commented on YouTube. Uh, especially the guy who was wondering who the guy with the 70s porn star moustache was. That's That'd me. be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, there will be a Movember donations link up on my Twitter. Um, obviously, fantastic charity. But yeah, it's nice to arrive in a bit of form. Um, guest girl a couple of weeks ago in the Grand Sefton and Broadway Boy is my best bet. That you know, that's going that's what happens when you reset before yeah. the start of the new season. So well done. It's working. It's working a treat. Uh, there's so much good racing to talk about. So it's time for this week's Racing Recap. And Cheltenham's three-day November meeting, the obvious place to start. Now, there was some decent racing on Friday, but it didn't really leave me with a great deal of forward anticipation looking through a lot of the races. Um, I'll spin through them, starting with the, Ar the Arkle trial. Obviously, on Public won. JPR won the horse to take out of it, though. He, he looks very good, but obviously had that uh, mishap at the last. I think there were a couple of horses to take out of it. I thought Petit Tonnerre actually ran well. I didn't think um, John Joe Jr. was overly hard on him. The race sort of almost fell into his lap, but JPR1 is a very interesting horse because he um, he wasn't top level over hurdles, but he, he would have won well here, I think. Mm. He would have won well against good horses, and I'm interested to see where they go. Um, there are some nice British novices this season knocking around, which is good to see. Um, I think... Irish trained horses account for 80% of the favourites at Cheltenham, mm. which is a bit mad, but I, I thought this was a really nice performance from him. The, the irony was he didn't make any sort of a no. mistake, and it was he didn't even make a mistake at the last, so really nice performance from from. but I think I think two or three of the horses out of this will be interesting going forward. What's your takeaway from that race? I liked it as a, as a form guide. If you, don't, if you look back at the race previously as well, it has been quite a good trial for the Arkle, mm -hmm. but the Ketalon mm -hmm. won it before winning the, the Arkle in 2020. Alderado Allen won it before finishing second to Shiskin. So it has got some previous. I think even though there was only four runners, it is stronger form than probably what we probably thought. Mighty Tom, obviously slightly disappointed. Um, that he he was, that but, might be all he is, though. But he was rated 141 over hurdles, yeah. so he was relatively solid going into it. Petit Tonnerre had finished seventh in the, in the county hurdle, so he was bringing through forward Cheltenham form. Um, I suppose the one not to take out of it was, ironically, the winner. Mm. Um, Humpa Valiki, who's now two from two over fences, but I think we kind of know what he is. But JPR won. I was really impressed. He jumped really well. The amount of distance he managed to put up between him and the field, between the second last and the last, I was really impressed with. 
He's gone up £11 this morning, up to a mark of 145 They could get a confidence booster into him in a novice handicap chase off that mark, or they could go to the Henry VIII novices chase if they wanted to. But he's 33 to 1 with Bet365 for the Arkle. And I wouldn't put anyone off that. If you look back at the Arkle in the, in the recent years, it has been a small field, mm. especially if you're going to have Fasal Vega and Marie Nationale taking out a lot of the market. The Turners currently looks a weaker race, so whether you get a trainer's kind of targeting that as opposed to the Arkle. It's entirely could, possible that might happen. You, you, yeah. you could get a six-runner yeah. Arkle. Yeah. And at 33 to 1, three places each way, I wouldn't pay anyone off that. 100%. It's a fair call. Uh, the cross-country chase at Cheltenham last Friday was considered to be a great opportunity for Gordon Elliott to win it with either Delta Work or Galvin. Uh, Delta Work finished lame. Uh, Galvin didn't seem to run with a great deal of enthusiasm. Travelled okay, but as soon as it became hard work, he looked hard work. How did you read Foxy Jax's win? I just think it's a bit of a non-event. I, I, I do like the fact that it's a handicap because then you work out actually the level of form with Delta Work and, and Galvin. But the, this and the, and the December race are just completely separate races from mm. the whole rest of the calendar. I think it, if you've got a horse like, um, who finished third? It was Didero Vallis yeah. finished third from £19 out of the handicap. You kind of just know to, to chuck the form in the bin. I suppose the one to keep an eye on is, is Late Night Party. He was having his first start for Dan Skelton officially. Obviously, yes. I think the, the long-term target is the Grand National for him. So they needed to have a, a main trainer uh, as for him. But... Yeah, it's not the form that I'd look forward to going forward. Yeah, it was really a good run from late night part. Gene Andrews gave him a terrific yeah. ride, but just couldn't quite get past uh, the eventual winner. What did you make of, of, of Galvin in yeah, particular? Yeah, it was, it was a kind of a squiggle performance, wasn't it? It puts yeah. a question mark about him going forward. And like, I wouldn't say I'm overly interested in the cross-country section until Cheltenham happens, but I think Mouse Morris's horses, it's good, good to see the form that they're in. And yeah. this horse has had so many, like the winner, we shouldn't forget, was a good winner of the race. He's had so many jumping problems, yeah. really, really well regarded. But this might be his discipline. I wouldn't underrate him. I think um, Mouse has had very few horses in this discipline that I can think of yeah. but all of a sudden like and you have the sort of Michael O'Leary kind of leaving them and leaving other trainers and Rob Core have invested in gentlemen's games a really interesting horse going forward mm. but I'm getting a great kick out of Mouse having some nice winners at Cheltenham in recent times yeah, you said think, it's, sorry, it's, it's well done to anyone that's picked him out because his first two starts over the cross country discipline well. was a fool and an unseat so if you manage to, to put your faith in yeah. him well done conventional chases have been a problem yeah. not to mind yeah. this yeah so well, he does have an engine when he puts it together but he um, said Malson said after the race he said I was expecting him to make a mistake yeah and he said he only made his mind up 10 minutes before declaration time yeah. or entry stage before putting the horse in the race because he well, it wasn't a plan or anything he just mm. had a word with the owners and went let's go for it um, Manila Missile beat Captain Teague that was the, I thought the big story on Friday is it because we expected too much of Captain Teague, or are we going to underrate Manila Missile? Oh, I think he's underrated. Like, and it was uh, Steve was putting in the comments as we were coming here. He's won what? He's won his two race over hurdles at twenty twos, and what was the last? He, he went off twenty to one for a, for a maiden hurdle at Chepstow, and then twenty two to one in this. Like, he, he must not work like a great horse at home. <laughs> it's funny, and like Williams after race is kind of playing him down, but he's a smashing pedigree. He's yeah. a really, really smashing pedigree. Um, like even the family, their winner is half brother to Mom Big Genius, who he rates very highly. Mm. And I do love the way he battled. Like I know he was there was a little bit of what, what way was he getting five pounds? But the big joy ends a good solid yardstick. Yeah. I sort of fancied him in the race. He travelled great, and he was sort of unable to match him. Now, I, I would I wouldn't underestimate this horse from maybe the Albert Bart or something down the line. He's he's not bad. Yeah, the the owner. Uh, I spoke to the owner, Janet Davis, was a hundredth winner. She'd lost her husband twelve months ago, so oh, it was yes, quite a yes, poignant. That was lovely. Yeah, that, that was, was a poignant yeah. moment. But she, in the in the course of the chat, she did say that before he first ran, Evan had sort of suggested keep your expectations low about this horse. So it's quite, I guess it's quite nice in the sense that he is surprising them because you just don't know where he's going to take them. Yeah, I think this is this is form again that, that you can trust because the big doyen bought through listed place form mm -hmm. over in Ireland. The captain T is interesting, isn't he? Because he's, he's won a point to point, he's won a bumper, he's finished third in the champion bumper and then won the Persian War. But he still looks a bit inexperienced. A big baby. He's massive. I still think that he will be a grade one performer, albeit that you might have to wait until he goes over fences. Three and a quarter miles plus over fences. But it was interesting how the framework of the race is set up, because often on soft ground at Cheltenham, going wide is the, mm. is the thing to do. But then you've got to look at Manila Missile, obviously went up the inside. Burdett Road went up the inside. Iverico Road went up the mm. inside. So it might have been that actually Harry Cobden was in the wrong place. And mm. then because of that, everyone kind of realised that actually we need to be up the inside here. So I'd upgrade Captain T performance and I wouldn't give up on it. Yeah, um, again, speaking of Harry Cobden after the race, he was, 
he felt he would have won, regardless of where he... Because uh, I did mention to him about going round the outside. He said, I felt I would have won wherever I'd gone on him. I thought the better ground was on the outside. He said, but actually, when you look at him, he is really not a horse that you're going to see not developing. Two, right? Yeah, he's such a big unit, and he, he needs time, and he needs a bit of distance. It's, so. it's just interesting, the, the winner as well. I'm just looking here, like the... The four horses that ran down Royal in the big race were all from the point-to-point -point field. Mm. And I've made this point recently that the racing has gotten so kind of concentrated in Ireland because they're basically sold for massive money after they win a point-to-point -point and nobody could get their hands on them except select few. He was bought for 37 grand after yeah. winning a point-to-point, -point, which is buttons, like absolute buttons. And maybe he's one of these horses, these nice kind of stairs that is going to grab our affection in time because yeah. he's unheralded and yeah. he's just he does it at the track. But 37 grand looks an absolute... Like, he is a really nice pedigree. Beat Hollow, as I said, a half-brother to um, to the Monbeg horse. And, yeah, he's he's very exciting going forward. We'll stay over hurdles about a horse that I think is also quite exciting. But you two might have differing views on Badette Road in terms of a potential punt for the Well, we're having a trial. quite bet off the, off the record after <laughs> this, yeah. So he looked impressive. He had a fair amount to do. Harry Cobden rode him with a great deal of confidence. Obviously, there was that incident at the first hurdle, which mm. caused <laughs> I was, I was like, he's going to be carried <laughs> off the <Yeah>. track here. <laughs> um, tell me about your impressions of Badet Road. So this is like, you know, the two sides of the argument here. I put him forward as a 10 to follow on uh, Friday. And part of what was under sufferance is like, you've got to put in some British horses. If I'm putting in 10 horses here... <laughs> it sounds... It, well, I know. <laughs> it I know. Sounds it's terrible, it's, it's like it? It's like a sop to... But like, I was, because we're... I'm quite, um, you know, I'm, going, I'm aligned towards the Irish horses naturally anyway, but 80% of the favourites are Irish trained, yeah. so it is what it is. I don't want this at all. I, I want the British to be at least parity. I want it to be like the old days where we celebrated our winners, but it is what it is. But Bernard Rose, look at this horse, and it's like, didn't see his hurdle in debut, but looked at, look back, and he's 4-9, to nine, he's quite keen. Like, he's by the same sire as a dream to share. So this this is a young sire. I think he might I think he might be in France now, Muharar, but he's um, getting nice horses. A dream to share is also a bumper horse, even though he's quite flashy in terms of his pedigree. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this horse gets a mile and a half pretty much. Now, the ground, I was talking to Andy Holding, who's kind of sweet and the French horse going into the race, and I was like, this horse could be very interesting. Like, the ground is going to be a bit of a concern. And looking at the race, like he's he loses about four or five lengths at the start. Mm -hmm. He's dropped in like a non-trier. He, he's really, really poor at some of his hurdles. And you're like, what's Cobden doing here? Is he is he educating the horse because he can be quite keen? And that turn of foot. And the horse he beat on Brad Dunfassa mm -hmm. um, would have been a reasonably good Irish yard stick in terms of our juveniles this season. It's obviously very early days, but landed a gamble at Ballon Row very, very easily. And for all that this horse did wrong, I was really excited. And I was saying to the lads after it's 12 to 1 for the triumph is a gift. Uh, Steve might disagree. It's gone into sevens now, but I'm like, I know Willie Mullins has Marsborough to come, who's very yeah. well regarded. But if we can get, and it's an if, if we can get decent spring ground, that this horse has turned a foot. He'll have maybe one run before that yeah. to get his jump. If he's anywhere close jump at the last, there's, nothing's going to live with that, that pace he has, in my view. Possibly the Adonis mm. for him next, and then. Onto the triumph. So, what's the what's the differing view with regards to his triumph hurdle chances? It, it's purely just the, the the last few years with Willie Mullins and, and these French horses that just get parachuted mm. in because we often yeah get excited and this horse is this for the triumph hurdle etc. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was impressed with the performance. That tactical speed that he showed to nip up the inside because there was there was a chance that he was going to be be blocked before the turn into the home straight. But yeah, Harry Cobden just give him a bit of a squeeze tactical. Tactical speed, got mm -hmm. up the inside and, and powered clear. Um, he's, he's learning about jumping. I think Harry Cobden was at pains to kind of just make sure that he got over them and kind of settled. Because if he, if he took a flyer at some hurdles, he'd probably get lit up. Um, I thought Cobden was actually brilliant. He was because super. if you're watching this race halfway around, I don't know what he touched in running, but it's like this horse is not going yeah. to get home. He's, he's quite keen. He's given him an awful lot to do on rain, soft and ground. And the way Nichols has kind of not had that many runners in the juvenile division in recent years, maybe he'll be able to ride him come Cheltenham. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if he, he, if he, do, if he can keep the ride. Yeah. Because, mm. yeah, if Paul Nichols has, a, has another sort of horse in. And, and Johnny Delahaye does, does buy these mm. sort of horses. So you'd imagine they'll end up on, on But those. the cool thing as well is, like, I used to love the days of these flashy horses yes. off the flat. Yeah. And then you're talking about them, like, in November, about, like, talking until March. Yeah. And this is going to be him. I'm going to be talking about him until March. Hopefully the Adonis doesn't kind of, you know, screw that up. Or yeah, that. I used to love, I love it when mm. a decent sort of mile and a quarter, mile and a half mm. horse would switch from 
uh, flat, you know, like you remember Midnight Legend mm. or uh, uh, Nomadic Way or whatever. Or good horses. back in the day as well. Uh, yeah. You know, good horses mm. who would go over her. He's very good as well. He's like a hundred odd race. Yeah, he's a Royal Ascot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he's... And he's shown versatility yeah. in regards yeah. to the ground. And again, um, lucky enough to speak to Harry Cobden after the race, and I said about keeping the ride, and he went, well, Paul's got quite a few, he said, but none well, of them, right. none of them will be as good as this chap. Take that, um, Paul. <laughs> yeah, have some of that. <laughs> brave man's game. <laughs> uh, oh, God, I'm perhaps being a bit too brave man's game. Um, uh, the next horse we're going to talk about is one where I'm going to let Steve run on this because enough to be proud of. Broadway boy, you were very confident about his chances. And bar that blunder four out, really wasn't any doubt about it. No, there wasn't. It was really well back before the off as well. He was about, I don't know, 11 to 2, 9 to 2 on the show. Obviously, we weren't expecting a good risk at all to, to kind of run in that race. We yeah. expected him to run in the, in the handicap chase instead, but still they punted him into 9 to 4. And there wasn't really a moment's worry until the blunder four out, but it didn't even stop his momentum. Oh. That's the nice thing I liked about it. He travelled well, he jumped well, and even when he made that mistake, he was quick away from the fence. Um, beat stable, mate, we've all been caught easily ended up being 20 lengths at the finish. I couldn't believe it when I, when I <laughs> actually read the winning distance because there was, what, probably five lengths clear in the last and he cleared away. Um, be Jockey took the blame for the blunder as well. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see, see where they go because he's 20 to 1 with Better 365 for the Brown Advisory and the same price with, for the National Hunt Chase. I think Connections will probably look at the shape of the races yeah. at that point because going going that extra distance in the National Hunt Chase I don't think will be an issue for him at all he just gallops and gallops and gallops um, it obviously boosts the form of Flora and Porter from their run last time but yeah having to concede five pounds to him was, was perfectly fine I think good risk at all beaten horses he probably needs to go back down in trip. I, I thought it was an interesting run mm. because it was his jumping that kind of let him down. Which was his strength. Which was his strength off. last time. And you kind of thought, oh, hang on a minute, going a slower pace over three miles, you, you think it, it jumped better. But then he stayed on again at the finish. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a strange one yeah. from him. But it, yeah, the, the winner was, was absolutely brilliant. He's yeah, now rated 146. So. Did you like that? I loved it. And again, uh, Nigel Twiston Davies having a good horse. I mean, this is what yeah. we need. As... as Steve says he gave five pounds for Foreign Porter. Their age differential would suggest to me that going forward, I might be on his side. Foreign Porter's mm. kind of going here as a slight afterthought. The three mile division, like, I really would have Gaelic Warrior as one of the most obvious, obvious bets for the three mile race right. this year. But you're looking at it now, and I love if you watch his race with Foreign Porter, he practically jump, out jumped him to the front at the start, and they kind of had a bit of a cat and mouse, but brilliant performance, stays all day. Molinas had a great weekend. Um, I'd really like this for this horse going forward, mm. and again, it is that's the only problem, as Steve says, where are these horses going to go? Because when Willie Mullins kind of starts tip, stepping it up, you are trying to um, you are trying to play a bit of cat and mouse, but really good performance. Just looks a horse that relish to stay in chase. Yeah, he just looks straightforward mm. and honest. Mm. I, I like. There's a lot to like about him, but Steve mentioned that even you know with that blunder, there was never a moment's doubt. What about in the big race? Which stage star? Now, this this race IQ who were t who started providing information as you you would know working uh, together on, on racing TV, but they've pointed out that he went into the fence two miles an hour quicker than the runner up, and then he lost about ten miles an hour of speed with that blunder mm. stage star. Um, yet what he did from that point to the line was perhaps the most impressive path. Yeah, um, I, I, I put up uh, the real whacker in the race and uh, mm. I was watching it like momentarily sort of turn off the screen, turned around and was like, this horse has been pulled up. And in fairness, excuses did come to light. I think he was lame. So I really wouldn't rule him out for the Gold Cup no. yet. I think, you know, if, if Jerry Colomb was all that, he did beat him fair and square in Cheltenham. Um, but what was good for me was that Nichols I think was talking on the Sunday at, uh, on Racing TV at Cheltenham and he's like yeah the horse is grand we were worried about this because it is a concern we'll see how he is over the next couple of days but um, it was a hell of a as you say from the last it was a hell of an effort and uh, yeah Harry Cobden it's um, it's been a good weekend for him I, I like that as well I, I like the fact that we'll talk about him maybe with, with regard to the weekend but yeah we will talk about this, him this was oh. How strong a race it was, I'm not entirely sure, but he was interesting going forward. What he went up 155, it was a great performance. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was terrific. What did you think? Yeah, so did the handicap, a bit of 11 pounds to 166. Mm. Like That's right into Gold Cup territory. Like. Oh, yeah. It's going to be interesting what they do trip wise. Obviously, the, the Ryanair is going to be the long term target. Mm. He's now 4 to 1 second favourite with Bet 365. And if it was between him and Alaho at 3 to 1, I'd be on stage star currently. I, mm. I thought Alaho's was okay as a reappearance. Mm. But I was blown away by Stage Star. I've never been a fan of him. Everyone <laughs> kind of poo-pooed the, the Turner's form. Yep. 
and yet you've had the one-two yeah. here mm. in arguably the best big handicap chase of the season so far. I, I thought it was a fantastic performance. I've never really liked the horse, but yeah, this has completely changed my perception of him. It's going to be interesting to see where they go. He was hard trained for the race now, as Nick was yeah. saying. He, did, he was like, yeah. you know, Brave Man's game is going to come on. We're training for King George. I trained him for this race. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, might, he might not run again before mm. the Ryanair. So. I'd love him to go to the Savills chase. And I don't mm. think he will, but you've got to look back at Nickel's record yeah. in the race. Like He, he used to run Denman, Denman what yeah. a friend, Tidal Bay. The UK had a good record in that race as well. He had synchronised and Bobsworth win it. So it, it would suit him. He needs to go left-handed. I don't think the three miles would be an issue to him. Not a bad um, shout, is it? It'd mm. be nice I, to see a, I a British horse go. We love seeing that in Ireland. Yeah. Like, and that festival, like, we'd absolutely love to well, see Nichols that. Nichols has yeah. been one to actually yeah. have yeah. a go with yeah. horses. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I was at the Dublin Racing Festival last year. He sent over Grenatine and he sent over Frodon, didn't he? Or mm. it was the year before. But yeah, he, he has got previous on sending, mm. sending horses still over to Ireland. I'd, I'd love him to go to Savile Street. Love it. Thank you, Kevin Keegan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> brief mention about Springwell Bay who won that intermediate handicap hurdle. There's, there's talk about Springwell Bay being a potential grade one horse. Do you, do you see that? Yeah, I can. He was keen in his race. Uh, I saw a lot of people kind of talking around the stairs early. It's 33 to 1 for the stairs with about 365 afterwards. I mean, he, he appreciated the drop down to handicap company, didn't he? He was keen through his race, but, but stayed on well at the finish. He'd finished sixth in the Mersey Novices uh, hurdle behind, at Aintree. And plenty went wrong as well. Yeah, yeah um, like Harry Cobden on Burdett Road, kind of he had the tactical speed to be able to nip up the inside mm. rather than getting stuck behind horses but it, it wasn't a race that I thought was the strongest in the world so yeah I'd, I'd want to see him do it again before I was kind of yeah thinking okay. about backing him I think he's race. interested going forward because of his he's so likely race another very expensive uh, purchase um, and probably learning in big field experience as well Sunday uh, mm -hmm. it was billed as a clash between Edward Stone and John Bond the Schler chase but I thought John Bond was mightily impressive. This was class. Yeah. Like, it's funny, he, <laughs> he might have been the most expensive national hunt horse that hadn't run in the national hunt race because he was 570 sterling. And he still hasn't actually paid back the 570, but he's getting very close. Like, I think he's one more or two wins he'll have paid back because he's a brother to Duvan. Um, and he was actually bought before his point point for sort of 140 grand by the mm. Holdens. That looked great. This was an amazing performance. I mean, you can't say the other three horses all bombed out. Um, I thought Edward Stone ran all right. Actually. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And like, okay, they're not they're not superstars, but he demolished them. And yeah. his first one back, um, probably kind of going through the motion a bit at times. And if we have this clash again, from I I I, I would actually kind of think that Wayne Henderson said he wasn't quite at his best at Cheltenham last year. I tend to believe that. I think. I think he's developing as a superstar they thought he might be. It was amazing. I mean, him. I've got a theory about the run at Cheltenham mm. at the, in, in, the, which in the Arkle, which I think he and Aidan Colvin had a little bit of a disagreement mm. at some point during the race. And if you watch John Bond's jumping mm. in comparison, and I've, I've watched both races again since he won on, Saturday, on Sunday, it's a different horse jumping on Sunday. He's quick, quick into the fence and quick away, mm. whereas he was a bit ponderous. He jumped the first few in the Arkle quite well, and then... I think Aidan Coleman took a little bit of a tug going mm. into a fence. And he, after that, he was almost waiting for Aidan Coleman to tell him what to do next. And I think there was... I, I didn't, didn't think it was the smoothest performance from a, a combination. But I think we saw uh, a confident horse Do you think he keeps the right? It's a tricky one. After, uh, it, that's his best performance. Mm. That's John Bond's best performance ever. Mm. Maybe yes. Yeah, I've been inclined. I, I thought it was deadly. I was really, really impressed with it. Because, like you said, there's, there's no excuses for them in behind. Uwe Negra was a two-time winner of the race. Yeah, the ground might have been a bit softer than ideal, but he ran perfectly well. Edward Stone, it was great to see him back. He didn't make a mistake the yeah. whole way around. He just, just got beaten by a better horse. But, yeah. And, and the other uh, editor, De Gilles, as well, he couldn't get into a rhythm no. out in front yeah. because John Bond hassled yeah. him because he was just jumping and flowing like he did. I, I thought it was magnificent. Yeah, put pressure on Editor Zeke going out onto the final circuit, took up the run at the top of the hill. Just, yeah, there was a small mistake at the ninth, mm. but it didn't stop his, like you said, in, in the article, there was a small mistake and it kind of knocked his confidence, but he was winging fences, idled up the finish, but he was entitled to do so. He was, yeah. Bear in mind he beat Captain Guinness as well previously. Captain Guinness was, yeah, like he didn't beat the best of the Irish at Navin, but he beat uh, very good Irish horses easily. And, uh, John Bond's had this is he's, he's like he's eleven from thirteen now. We are again into the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the territory of the good two mile chases that yeah. and doesn't it make you so excited for the season? You see these these colours, John Bond, such a flashy horse. 
and he's not even favoured for the race he's in. It's like we have a lot to look well, forward to. Well, what do you think? So from that stable, there's been Sprinter, Sakra, Altior, Mastermind. Shishkin. Not Mastermind, sorry, Shishkin. When yeah. they were, you know, obviously yeah. Shishkin, when he was a two-miler. Yeah. I think they know when they've got a very good mm. one, and I'm pretty sure. As things stand, who would you back for the Queen Mother Champion chase? Definitely John Bond. At Definitely the prices, yeah. yeah, we're all we're yeah. all in. You've seen him. You, you've seen yeah. that he's he's improved. El Fabiano is going to have a couple of penalty kicks over in Ireland, yeah. isn't he? Really, if he goes to the heavyweight yeah. chase, he'll be tens on. Yeah, the the, the I, I I was thinking this last night. Like when the non-runner no bet eventually comes in, it will. And I'm not trying to put people off bets now because there are bets now, but it will clarify a lot because, like John Bond could. I, th I, don't, I don't think they have any problem going two and a half miles. Yeah. Um, he, he will go for this race, but yeah. these races are, will cut up. And when you have the non rolling bet option, horses are taken out and there's no mm. rule four. That's the beauty of it. I, I'm really excited to see him next time. We all agree with that. He looked magnificent in winning the Schler. Uh, let's talk about the Great Wood Hurdle that happened on, on Sunday as well. Iberico Lord, the winner, right end of the handicap, but also worth mentioning that that naughty horse called Only Matter of Time did what he's done before. And that is just... I mean, if you backed him, you kind of knew the, the, the previous. So what can you say? Yeah, he disgraced himself, didn't he? I, I felt sorry for Danny Mullins because he was keen throughout the race. He tried to bury him up the inside and it was only going towards a hurdle where they obviously had, without any railings, coming into uh, the railing. So I felt, I felt really, really bad for, for, for Danny. But yeah, we, we can forget about him going forward. Um, you I was really can't say that. You're, you're, you're not the forgiving type at all. <laughs> no, no. He's, only, he's had two instances without like... Being, Two in a row. Yeah, but he hasn't been like given the kind of the the love treatment or the some sort of mm. um, psychological profiling at the very least. Because why do you do that? I mean, it is a bit mad. Like Paul Burns, I was involved in two horses. Obviously, yeah. Corbus Cross that he sold. But like I was in Mallow when this happened. It wasn't in my head that it, it could happen again. For some reason, it's just like whatever it happens. And again, you're looking at the screen. Where did that horse go? It's yeah. like, but it's an interesting one because you buy this horse, everything looks great, and now he's run out twice. Yeah. Where's Monty? But you're, you're, you're done. Yeah, I'm, you're, done. I'm, where, I'm where done. Where is Monty? <laughs> you're done with him. Yeah, he, he's got. Uh, don't take away from the winner. I thought the winner was, was wildly good, yeah. impressive. Um, look away, finishing second, brave front runner performance, but he's, he's kicked him out of the way. It was a mark of 126 that he won off. Obviously, he hasn't been reassessed yet. Um, regardless of if he goes up eight, nine, ten pounds, stuff like the Betfair hurdle will be an obvious target mm. going forward. Um, I thought Lucia ran all right in third. Um, Travel, like, she's a bit of an enigma. I liked her in the race and. She kind of went from looking the winner to sort of really struggling to hold on for third. I don't, and what was the ground? Soft on the day. Yeah. Um, but she, there could be a big race in her. Like there, there could still be a big handicap in her. She was well backed as well. Flat track on, on mm. good ground. The, the one to kind of take out from, from sat in a box at home is under control, who, who beat mm. Iberico Lord at Sandown in April. I mean, she's going to have a huge chance in the Jerry Field and she's going to take the Epiton route um, into that race. And she could be a bit of an outsider for the champion hurdle if, if connections decide that, to go that way. She's 66-1 yeah. to one with Bet365 and the, there's form boosts all over the place. And mm. as, we, as we know, the champion hurdle, yeah, you're going to have Constitution Hill, Imperio Pass and, and State Man, but there's not going to be a lot else in the race. The, it's only a matter of time, um, or only a matter of time. I, I, I was messaging Paul, the owner, beforehand, and he's like, yeah, I, I think the horse is going to improve. Um, his rating at, towards the end of the season, he will be rated higher than he's now. That's mm. my hope. So I was looking at it like it's a 15 runner race, kind of puts me off each way. So I ended up not backing them anyway. Um, but they will next day, they'll cover him up, I think. They'll just do everything they can because he's, he has plenty of ability by all accounts. I, I mm. tend to give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, he's, he's had a handful of career starts and um, put headgear on him. Give him one more, at least one more chance, I think, because well, he's probably gonna, well handled. If they're going to cover him up, I'm not going to have a bet in that race in case he takes something out. Yeah, there is that as well. But like, it was a nice bit of planning. Gets into the Gravewood with a rating of 115, mm. which is relatively modest, low weight. Um, it just goes to show even somebody like Paul Byrne, you, you are kind of a prisoner to look as well. Indeed. Uh, lots of good racing to reflect on outside of what we saw at Cheltenham. Um, I'm going to come to you, Johnny, to, to maybe give a, a pricey on what we saw in Ireland in particular, because we saw big names. Fasal Vega. I particularly enjoyed watching Bob Ollinger nearly back to something like the Bob yeah. Ollinger that we, mm -hmm. we remember. Not quite, but pretty good. Pretty good. Tell me about some of the performances that struck a chord. Yeah, so much gets through. As I mentioned, Captain Guinness, um, he won by seven lengths, in fairness, in a good renewal of the Fortria. Fasal Vega, um, 
I thought he's pretty spectacular, to be honest. He's a really weird, um, really weird action if you watch him on the head-on. His front leg kind of goes way out to one side, like really weird. Not the most efficient way of doing things. Didn't jump brilliantly at times, but this clash of Marine Nationale and some other horse we mentioned, the two-mile division, um, could be good because he looks like he has a bit of a swagger mm. over fences. In the pockets, a really, really smart horse, beat mm. him well. Maybe ridden a bit too conservatively on the day. Bob Ollinger, um, I, I think maybe on the ground he was probably more in love with it than Zana here, who might probably beat him on better ground. But home by the Lee was giving weight away. Not a bad start to the yep. season. I thought he ran a phenomenal race in the World Hurdle last year. Serious Hurdle wouldn't be giving up on him. Um, Stellar Story was very good. Um, What's up, darling? Really good performance. I mean, if I, if I can go into Sunday whilst yeah, I'm here. Um, I mean, we start, the weekend started with was a Wexford on Friday where we'd like Manella Crooner run it. But going into the Sunday then... Um, Croke Park he's named after the headquarters of the GA in Ireland which kind of would be again I think he costs over 400 grand I was at Kilbegan when he was beaten in a bumper Kilbegan with all due respect to Kilbegan and you're like what a waste of money that is he's two from two since smashing performance yeah. I thought as much as this was six runner race dominated by one trainer it was really interesting to watch took his time to get going but then was sort of apparently idling in front a little bit really nice uh, staying prospect but again once wants fences um, American Mike also beaten fact to file who's going yeah. straight over fences American Mike the problem I have with him is he did not kick on at all last year I really rate him he was beaten in Nav and he, he touched a mad price in running was beaten at short odds didn't kick on but he was very good and Jack Kennedy apparently has done a lot of schooling with him um, some others to, to mention I suppose um, yeah look to the uh West winning for Rob Core. Rob Core have a lot of serious mm. horse all of a sudden. Um, be beaten by Illuminescence, who's really well regarded. Um, another fascinating runner going forward for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore. And even in the bumper as well, only by night, quite impressive for Gavin Cromwell. It was it was a brilliant. I just got a laud and as well. They've turned this into a little festival, so it was a two-day thing. Yeah. Invited people from Northern Ireland to come down. And like even seeing the people in the stand, I wasn't there Sunday now, but we've seen the people racing. We've serious problems in Ireland getting people racing at the moment. And this was a great job, well done to get people to know them. Well, it's working. It's mm. working. Good horses will Fantastic do that. Fantastic racing, like really good it's racing. Exactly. Yeah. You get good horses, good mm. racing. People will come yeah. and watch. Um, anything that you want to mention from Ireland as well, Steve? Or no, do you want to go to the, to the Brits? No, um, Coco Beach winning the Troy Town. That was obviously... Danny Gilligan's now on the Galway Place and yeah. the Troy Town. Like, I, I, we've been saying this for a while. This kid is so good. Yeah. But, yeah. By the way, what, what is your thought on the 14 runners that Gordon Elliott had? Absolutely at fine. Have you got any issues with that? Like, apparently it was a world record, however yeah, they came up yes. with that. But I mean, it's so, it's so ridiculous. I, I have serious misgivings about it. No, not in the slightest with Gordon, but in terms of the optics of the race, I was privileged to own a tenth of a horse who finished second in the Troy Town. And the buzz about that race, it, it seems almost fanciful now. Ironically, like Willie Mullins didn't target it at all. Mm. Gordon's not even the top trainer in Ireland. Um, like you have a situation where Jigginstown and Gordon Elliott have this kind of alliance that means they've all these staying chasers. Most of them don't make the top grade, so if they can make them into a Triton horse, they'll run them. I've nothing against Gordon doing it. It was the same though in Limerick in the Munster National. I don't think, like the optics of it at all, to be honest. Um, and I think if we are looking at potentially changing the rules to a degree about how many horses a trainer can run in a race, potentially we, we might need to do that and bring it in sort of in a few years down the line so you can plan for it, not bring it in overnight because you can sound of a load of horse with Ellie, for example. What would they do? I, what did you think? I, I, I'm not mad on the optics of it, to be honest. Uh, and and Jig and Sound are extremely good. They're really honest with their horses. So I can back a horse and know it's trying. Yeah. I still don't like the optics of it. I, I'm, I'm similar in that I don't think it's great for selling the sport in that it's just dominated by so few names. But unfortunately, that is the situation. What, unless, you know, there are rules that prevent, not just, not just prevent mm. number of horses that are trained that run in a race, but before that, you know, how many horses are in training, et cetera, cap the number of horses in training with certain trainers. Because otherwise, it, if it carries on, you're just gonna have, you say, you're gonna have a whole bunch of horses staying chasers owned by Jigginstown with Gordon Elliott. Mm. And you can't then just have them sitting there going, well, I can only run five in a race when I know I've got 20 that are well, eligible for the race. 100%. And like the, the, the crack, this, we, when we were involved in that horse, it was before WhatsApp. And I can only think of if WhatsApp were involved because there were about 10 of us in the syndicate. And it was so much fun. The horse was a real rags to riches horse. But most of the crack wasn't around the race, which takes place over a few minutes. It was the debate with the trainer. Will he run? Won't he run? Will he handle the ground? What form is he in? 
So imagine going up to your trainer on Sunday and saying, what about your other 14 in the race? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just seems absolutely absurd. Yeah. Um, and that was if you were the connection to Gevray, who obviously had won the, what about your other, whatever it was, 13 <laughs> yeah. or 14? I don't know. I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the optics of it. And it takes away from the, the enjoyment of cheering a horse in because, I mean, what does it matter? Yeah. Really, and, and, and like you said, I mean? it's a it's a self fulfilling prophecy because yeah. then people coming into the sport are going to go, well, shouldn't I have a horse in training with Willie Mullins or Gordon Elliott because mm. they seem to be dominating, mm. and would I have any success if I have it with a a trainer who's slightly lower down? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's the the longer term issue mm -hmm. that I have with having fourteen runners in a race. But you have still got Jiggers Town spending three hundred, four hundred grand on horses that they know are going to be three mile chases. Like we could be talking about the Troy Town in three years time, and we're going to be mentioning Stella Story and Croke Park, who are two that could well be running in that race if they fall below the grade one level over fences. I we, do we could be talking about them as a Gold Cup horse in a few years' time, or they could be in the Troy Town. But the the, the the point to point circuit briefly has gotten so professional now that it's gone totally away from its roots. And it also means now that horses are hard trained to win first time out. Yeah. They might even finish second. Like the horse that um, John won, the two horses he beat yeah. first time out haven't been cited under rules since. And it, it, you know, but you get now. It's so professional there that these horses are not out for a run in the field. They're out to be sold for 450 grand, yeah. and you're not going to have that money. So it squeezes the life out of the game from the bottom up, um, and a lot of them end up in handicap chases like Detroit Town. I'm, I'm not really that happy with the way it's going, but it's, that's the way it is. Uh, I was uh, talking to a few friends about it, and they were saying, ultimately, the point-to-point -point scene has become... Like jumping breeze ups now. Well, no, yes. saying, like, oh, yeah. you, you can, you can. I remember trying to sell my cousin's horse out of a maiden hurdle. It was actually Hunter's Call, who ends up oh, winning. Right, yeah. Kind of got injured, but like was sold for like a, mo a modest. Yeah. Ollie Murphy wins yeah. the big handicap with him, but he won a maiden hurdle for an unfashionable yard at Nace, beating like a JP horse. He couldn't sell him, but mm. if he won a point to point, he'd be like four hundred grand mm. and whatever, like three hundred grand, four hundred grand. So it's it's maiden hurdles are kind of meh, point to points, <laughs> yeah. absolutely like, and it's mad. Uh, okay, we must press on. Was there anything else? Uh, I thought some good performances at Cheltenham on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll go back to um, to Triple Trade on the Friday. Very I thought good. He was yeah. good. Um, stayed on well over two miles. He'll be another good. winner for you. Another and Gavin. To be fair. Okay, mm -hmm. well done, Gav. Um, yeah, ran well. Stayed on well. Um, to beat Calico, step up to two and a half miles next time. We'll probably be suiting I hope him. So, yeah. He's up six pounds to one hundred and thirty-six, so he hasn't been wildly. Overestimated by the handicapper, um, imposed Trois landed a, a gamble in the last on the Friday as well. He's up ten pounds to one hundred and thirty-one, so there'll be another handicap in him. Uh, Buddy One, I think, is worth touching on. Landed a big gamble, six mm. to one into nine to four. In Mad that, stuff in that three-mile hurdle, and there wasn't really a moment's doubt in that as well. There was a couple of disappointments in that place. That I know was well fancy for the pipes on this first run. No well show. Yep. Sham Blue again was an absolute no show. Chantry House, I thought, was a huge mm. eye catcher. Yeah. Mm. Get a I little really attempts qualifier into him, and here we head into the festival in those green and gold. Yeah. Um, Baby Kate, I thought, was good winning the listed mare's bumper. I thought that kind of got lost in the in the other races at Cheltenham. I thought that was a really good performance. One by four and a quarter lengths in the end. Uh, Bob Ollinger, yeah, was was a great story. I, I thought he was gonna, and there wasn't gonna go through with it. <laughs> there was a the moment, last. yes, because yeah. Rachel had smuggled him into the race, mm. and I thought she did brilliantly on him. And then that head came up after the last. And I thought, oh no, no place to hide at Navin. Like it's so, no. it's really, it's it's more difficult than Cheltenham. You mentioned Buddy One. I actually meant to put him forward for the stairs hurdle because I think, given that mm. performance, that brings him into the bracket of the stairs horse, the stairs hurdle kind of. Um, it definitely puts him in the picture. He's totally unexposed at three miles. He's he was ridden by Jack Gilligan, who's Danny's mm. brother, and he's kind of like the less heralded of the. I think three or four of them have ridden talented jockey in his own right. But Paul Gilligan won the Albert Bartlett with. Come on, come on, <sighs> come on, somebody. It was a big price, like it's we're going back. It was early on in the Albert Bartlett okay. days. Now, do you remember? Um, just, just, um, just keep talking there. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> incidentally, Buddy One. Talking about Buddy One, and I know this might. This is you're saying stays hurdle. Yeah. I think he might be a Gold Cup horse one day. Yeah. You can see it. Uh, Bertie's I, dream. Yeah. That's the but, one. Yeah. We not? got there in the end. Saint Frontier yeah. is the stallion, but he's 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 he won in Galway. He he said he really fancied him. Now I'm all, like, this was a hell of a gamble. Six into nine four at Cheltenham at the weekend, yeah. and he wins well. And maybe the, if you if you look at the stairs, I was looking at the stairs market uh, earlier on. There are a lot of them you can pick holes and not going to yeah. run the race. I think he's 33s. I can't see him running a handicap. He may more or less said he's done with handicaps now. All right. 
I, I'm going to ask you, what, you got something else to go Just with? Just while Brecken Castle I thought was really good in the bumper on the Sunday as well. Yep. Uh, the second there, Firefly is going to go novice hurling for Paul Nichols. I thought the two of them were, were, were good. And the winner could come to Leopardstown apparently. Yeah. Um, which oh, is, really? yeah, interesting taking on the Irish and bumpers would be Seem, would Seemed be to mean a lot to connections mm. when he hit the line. Yeah. Um, just give me one horse that you've seen from the last week that is going to win next time we see it in action. And don't say John Bond. Dice Art Enos. Dice Art Enos. We nearly lost it on the show because obviously ran on a Tuesday and we record on the Tuesday, but yeah. she won at Huntingdon last Tuesday. She's now very seven good. to one for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. She heads Strong to, form. She heads, <laughs> she heads to a Mayor's <laughs> listed Novice Hurdle at Newbury next and she'll win. Strong bumper form, I meant, sorry. I'm just going to give Bird a road. That's like probably, I know okay. he's, I don't know what being the dance. I, I, I love this horse going forward. I still think he's doing a lot wrong. Okay. Um, and here am I, the, you know, the Patriot, died in the world Patriot, like imploring a good British horse come <laughs> forward. Because I, I find dominance of one or two yards completely boring wherever they are. Irish pity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it all comes down to. Now, it's like you know, when you used to be... It's like, so you, I know you're not a massive cricket fan, are you? No. no but like West Indies used to be yeah. the best team in the world. Right? Now, they don't even get to the World Cup. Mm. And people say, oh, it's, you know, I really want a good West Indies side now <laughs> to make it interesting for world <laughs> cricket. I'm like, pity is what we're getting. Yeah. And this is what we feel about the festival and about jump racing. Ireland dominate and we get pity. Bear in mind now, the state basically pays for half of the prize money in Ireland, so we do have <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of an advantage. Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, that has been this week's Racing Recap. Okay, before we get into our weekend preview, just to let you know that our sponsor, Bet365, have an ITV Racing price promise. They will not be beaten on price on any horse for all UK and Irish races shown live on ITV Racing Full. T's and C's can be found on the website. Time to look ahead to what we've got coming up this weekend. There's been a lot of chat about uh, the Betfair chase because Brave Man's Game is an intended runner and Daryl Jacob is taking the ride. Um, obviously, I can understand why people have looked at that with somewhat somewhat cynically going well it's a grade one big race best horse in the yard why isn't harry cobden riding it paul nichols has responded and said he can't be in two places at one time there are a lot of good horses running at ascot johnny de la has got a lot of horses for us you accept that uh i i have to say like paul nichols is kind of a, a character like that i guess prompts a lot of chat i i love him in the media I think he's great <laughs> so i mean I. I have to say i texted mouse morris uh, a photo of him celebrating um, stage stars win at the weekend and I texted Mouse and said I preferred the footage of him with Brave Man's game the last day because <laughs> I think, think Mouse got a kick out of that but Paul Nichols you don't want to be like you know on live TV celebrating a, a 1 to 10 shot in running getting beaten like Brave Man's game was I just think he needed to run a little bit they're mm -hmm. training for the King George um, and I actually do buy what Nichols is saying maybe I'm completely wrong I don't have a strong view on it yeah. but Harry Cobden deals, deals with it in such a class way he's brilliant in the media in terms of what he says about this it is what it is the owner has horses here I don't want to ride him again all good Happy? Yeah not an issue at all I think Daryl Jacob is, is a good person for him he's nice and quiet on the horse I think will suit him well but if you're Lorcan Williams or, or Bryony Frost would you would you be slightly annoyed? I think so I think I, mean, I watched the horse you? I watched the novice chase yesterday Bryony got oh, this horse did, jumping yeah. she was unbelievable on him yeah. um, obviously he has a good relationship with Frodo and I, I think they're they're justified to be slightly annoyed but yeah, I haven't got a problem with the fact that Harry Cobden's riding at Ascot. I think I mean, the one thing Paul Nick has always said about uh, whether it was Sam Tuston Davis or Daryl Jacobs, there's always place for them. Yeah. Mm. You know, Sam Tuston Davis came back and won a King George mm. from after he left us. And obviously, Daryl Jacob won the, won the Grand National for him mm. amongst other uh, good horses. So I can see that. Um, let's deal with the race itself. Now that Brave Man's Game is in it, Protector Rat now somewhat shaken up a little bit because Brave Man's Game has officially got six pounds in hand. Yeah, and holds him on form uh, last season as well. Um, I, I think he should. I, th I did agree with Paul Nichols in his blog. I think he should be favourite. Um, I'm not sure is Shishkin going to run. The nice. ground is heading to ask it. Yeah, the, so the ground, the ground now looks like it's going to dry out. Like we've had, we've had a lot of rain, but it's we're going to have four or five dry in relatively mild days. Um, and as much as again, he's not. He, I think you know Protector at camp is saying we're actually preparing him for this race. This is his sort of cup final, and maybe it isn't for Braven's game, but. I thought he was all. He did everything bar win against gentleman's game the last year. I, I'd have no issue with him coming here. I think he's a better horse, basically. Simple as that. I'd be in agreement. I, he's 
got form at Haydock. He won a graduation chase there. He's going to be fine over the trip. Mm -hmm. He's going to be fine over uh, on the on the ground. I can understand why people have backed Protector at anti post because he was always the definite runner. We've only mm. got six in at the minute. Shiskin isn't going to run. I'm sure Manella Drama is going to head to Ascot as well. He's never ran over further than than two mile five. Correct Rambler was disappointing. He needs yeah. to take a massive step forward. So really, you, you to roll up a guy, Protector at and Brave Man's game. Protector at he's six from twenty one in his career. Five from 12 over fences and only won one out of his last five. And the race rounds. last year obviously completely fell apart. Yeah, we beat Eldorado Allen by 11 lengths. Like, you had Bristol de who was retiring at that stage and a Plutard who wasn't himself. Like, it, it was a terrible race. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't be dreaming of backing Protector at, at 11 to 8 with Bet365 right now. I, I'd have Brave Man's game favourite. But the one I'd take a chance on is Royal Pagai at 15 to 2. Like, his Haydock form is awesome. He's got form of figures of 1 1, 2 1. Um, he won by seven lengths and then won two Peter Marsh chases. One of those was by 16 lengths and then the other one was by half a length. And then his second place was in the Betfair chase um, behind the Plutard. He actually jumped poorly that day as mm. well if you go back and watch it. So that, that could Ground be would be if it's a drying week? Yeah, but there's rain forecast for Friday. I, don't think, I think it's still going to be soft ground. I don't think it's going to be heavy, okay. but soft ground will be fine. He finished one place behind Protector out in the Gold Cup and then obviously fell in the Irish National. But... Venetia Williams is in red hot form. She's 40%, 10 from uh, last 25 runners mm. at the time of recording in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I think 15 to 2 is a good price currently. The one thing about the ground as well is, right, we've had so much rain. Mm. It's not the same as your average sort of November in Britain. So, like, you'd almost sometimes wait. You can see, what does a jockey say after race one or two? It might be called soft ground. It might be proper, oh, proper yeah. soft ground. Yeah. Or it could be almost summer soft. It's not going to be that here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brave Man's Game, I think Daryl Jacob just point him in the right direction. Uh, on the same, to eight, it looks top price for Bet365. I, I can't see him going off that. I no, really can't. He'll go off odds off. On the same card, it's the Stayers Handicap Hurdle, for which Slate Lane is the 11-4 favourite. Crambo, 3-1. to one. Bold Endeavour, 9s. Fine Margin is 10s. 11-1, uh, bar those. So, Slate Lane, 3-3 three from three since he's gone to Emmett Mullins and... He Speak to Paul Byrne about this? I did. I just asked him coming over, um, what do you really think of Rishi Prasad? Um, but Jesus. then I asked him... <laughs> I can tell you. He didn't say Jesus anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, did he say, oh, Jesus? <laughs> I don't know what to make of this horse. I mean, he was so keen the last day. He was like, I, I don't know what, what... If you backed him, were you like, what was he? One to two. Um, took him an age to settle. Clearly has a lot of ability. Uh, he mm. goes for the race. I'm inclined to say at this stage... With Bet365 paying a quarter of the odds, four places, um, I'm actually inclined to back that. Willie has a horse in the race that I thought was really fascinating um, for a, a guy who I think that the owners had some nice horses in Ireland, fine margin. Um, he's with, he was coming from a yard that ha has only had a handful of runners, yes. Um, he's coming here rated 124 steps up in trip. He's really like a Paul yeah. Byrne type horse. Willie is, has, um, has a guy who Mayneil has entered in the card as well. I, I get the impression he probably won't run. And if this does cut up, um, I'm going to take a chance and Emma can eke out a bit of improvement. I have to, I'm not going to lie. It's very hard to know what he's, what he's worth, but he's only a five-year-old, finds plenty. He's winning with plenty in hand. So that's your selection? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Slate Lane. What about you? I was just worried about how keen Slate Lane was um, for this race, to be honest. I know the kind of running a better race will probably suit him because he will settle a bit better. I thought Wackle was quite a big price. Oh, I'm with you. At, at 20 to 1. I'm um, with you. Finished seventh in the race last year so, so it's not like he's chucked in off a two pound lower mark but you need to remember that he then went on and won the render from hurdle over the course and distance like it's rare that a horse has ran in a race won a grade two and then come back off a lower mark the, the mm. next year he ran okay in the attempts finished midfield and then yeah was disappointing in a handicap hurdle at air the other day but they sent him off seven to four favorite that day i think he was probably just in need of the run and yeah he's rated 127 uh sorry the favorite rate 127 um yeah it was two pound lower than last year yeah, I thought Wackle was quite... Was I, I totally agree. He's my selection for the race, Wackle, at 20 to 1. Uh, the other thing about him, I thought, um, apart from everything else, is he loves it. He seems to go well at Haydock. Um, he's been dropped a couple of pounds since that run. I think everything seems to be gearing up for a, a big run here. Um, and he just, at the, at the prices, if the field's going to cut up, as you, uh -huh. uh, we, we all believe, I thought he, would, he was a, a decent player. So Wackle for the Alexanders. There we go. A uh, couple of big races in Ireland over the weekend. The Morgiana Hurdle, it appears to be a great opportunity for State Man to return to action. Um, and he is expected to be favourite, expected to win. And 
Still the biggest danger to Constitution Hill? Uh, there's, no, there's no danger to Constitution Hill in, in the sense that he is the danger is himself, like that something goes wrong. Stateman, um, he's very, very good, but you, you can't, it doesn't, I mean, there's literally nothing he can do to be Constitution Hill. It's like fame and glory where they tried to beat Caesar Stars under a million different tactics. It doesn't matter if if the horse turns up as Constitution Hill does. Personally, I think the two-mile division is going to be quite boring this year. And look at the entries. Gordon Elliott, Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Willie Mullins, Willie Mullins. At the night. So if you have a horse running this, Willie tends to keep horses apart. He certainly wouldn't have been running 14 in the same race. That's just not the way he operates. But what does he want to do with the likes of Imperi Passi here? He has a fascinating horse in the race as well. I was looking earlier. Oh, I'd kind of forgotten about Mr. Policeman, who, who came from France and beat Cashback over hurdles at Cork in April. Pretty much forgotten about him because he's just another of these kind of flashy horses. Irish Point going forward. I think he's very good at Down Royal. Not exactly sure where he goes. You know, with State Man this year, he can stay in Ireland and basically avoid mm. Constitution Hill. And that's kind of all well and good, but like we need we need good two mile race in Ireland. We don't need procession. So um I, I you know, you gotta think you say with State Man, the last time we saw him he smashed Vauban, which is really good form. Um Vauban's a very, very good horse. He was beaten nine lengths by Constitution Hill. When we did the odds checker uh, preview in um where was it before the in the bar? In March. In before March. The where was that on? Chiswick, 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 yeah. So I met a couple of characters who I've stayed in touch with, and we did a bet on the Constitution Hill distance. And I put I put up four and a half, like, and it was like as if I was the first person at the dog track to put up price, and it was just like scrum. <laughs> Two people who shall remain nameless who had never really met me before were having bets with me that I had to pay out nine lengths on the bridle. That's yeah. how that's how much he has to find with this yeah. horse. He's not going to take him on here. My big question is what Zana here is not going to run. I presume. What does Willie run against the horse? Not what anyone else runs against him. What about Pied Piper? The Gordon. Well, I he mean, ran really well in the, I mean, terrific yeah, runs. He's, 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 a, he's a still a, a really smooth traveling, very, very good horse. Could finish second. Yeah. I, maybe he'll represent him in the race. Um, that run the Sarah was obviously excellent off 96 as well, no less. Um, last time he ran against State Man, he was beaten 19 lengths. Any I'd, views I'd, on? I'd like to see Irish Point run. Mm. I, I was impressed with him on his mm. reappearance. I think he'll end up going up in trip mm. later on in the season to, to the stairs hurdle. But him being race fit against State Man, you at least get some sort of race. Mr. Policeman is entered in a novice chase on Friday. There's a really good, good beginner's show. chase at the uh, Fairy House. It's Blood Destiny, Elite Tom, and Mr. Policeman. So he, he's not going to run. Um, it'd be interesting to see, obviously, what Willie Mullins runs in that race. But yeah, with regards to the Morgana hurdle, it's State Man's to win, isn't it? State Man's to win. Uh, on Sunday, the John Durkin. Um, a, a rematch of the Punchestown Gold Cup. This is this is a bit more interesting. What a year um, Martin Brassel has had as mm. well. More most recently winning the Kerry National, um, and I I mean I actually put faster slow up when he ran at Cheltenham. He was running off a mark of 150. He's now 168, but he got beaten by Corey Grambler. And yeah. I, I remember watching the race like this. This JJ Slevin run, everything went perfectly. He just ran into one. And I was thinking of punches down. If you're, if, if there's a day to beat these horses, this is probably it. Not thinking he'd win, but like mm. he was very good. I imagine Gallop and Deschamps going to beat him here. He won the race in a canter last year. I don't think he was at his best at punch down. I'd completely forgive yeah. him that. Yeah. Um, so, again, two to five, four to one. Um, where does Blue Lord go? I remember putting him up for the champion chase last year and they ran him in the other race. Um, I mean, I could name out the trainers again, but it's basically the same trainers yeah. as French Dynamite. I mean, if he were to run, that'd be interesting. Mouse is some nice horses this year, but um, yeah, it's going to be a good race one way or the other. How do you see it? Straightforward? Straightforward, yeah. If, if you're going to drop back to two and a half miles on uh, on that ground, I think it's just going to suit Gallop Antichon. He's got plenty more pace. It's worth, worth remembering Fast or Slow was sent off 66 to 1 and finished fifth, beating 21 lengths in this race last yeah. year. Yes, he's improved, mm. but he needs off the ground of he was miles. being trained for a yeah. handicap at that time I yeah. think if that makes sense and I say that the nicest possible yeah. way now he's a great one horse yeah, yeah. no he, he's definitely going to finish closer this year but yeah Gavin mm. Shum just wins this alright want to just have a quick chat about Ascot as well some potentially good racing especially with the news that Shishkin's going to head there 99.9% .9 certain uh, that he heads for the 1965 chase and he's now 5-6 to six favourite with Bet365 for that race pick Dory 7-4 uh, Dash or Drasher, 6-1. to one. That's a, a, not a bad race. Thunder Rock, who was quite impressive at Carlisle, tens. Um, so, Victoria had seemingly, up until yesterday, great opportunity for Harry Cobden to bag a grade two 
but now Shishkin's in the picture. Yeah, the, the market's adjusted as it should have done. Like it, the, They obviously were just pricing Shishkin as if he was going to head towards the Betfair chase because, yeah, I couldn't quite believe the price of Shishkin. He beat him 16 lengths in the Ascot chase in February. Yeah. And yet they had Pictori favourite. Um, I think they've now got it the right way round. Yeah, it's not a walk in the park for Pictori anymore and uh, Harry Potter might wishes it to Haydock. Yeah. The only thing I think about this is that because this is the sort of right opportunity for Pick Dory, I suspect in a similar manner to Stage Star, he's going to be hard to train for it, yeah. But Shishkin has a long season ahead of him. You know, Paul Nichols, because of how Pick Dory races and where he likes to go, you're thinking Ascot, Kempton, Sandown are his tracks. Whereas Shishkin's got other big targets at the end mm. of the season. I thought. It's a hard race to get involved in though, because I, I generally, if Shishkin's running now, I neither back him nor lay him. I just, whatever it is, I've just kind of given up on really f figuring out the horse. And um, as much as he's brilliant, if you're back in Pictori, he shouldn't beat Shishkin, yet he's six to four or whatever it is. So it's like, is there an each way angle in the race? Very tough race to get involved in, I think. All right. Um, anything else over the weekend coming up at Ascot? Yeah, there's the Ascot hurdle. Goshen's back. Top he, weight. He won it off eight and uh, won it by eight and a half lengths last year, and then obviously the form's been boosted. His second behind Nappers Hill. Um, you've got Blue King Daru in there. I thought he was interesting up mm. to two and a half miles for the first time. He's obviously won a couple of those two mile handicaps. Um, goes up in trip. It seems as if he's obviously on the way up, and he's facing Goshen and Soral who are slowly on the way down. Yeah. So I think he's around five to one with bet three six five at the time of recording for that Ascot hurdle. So yeah, he can hopefully take the take the rise up in class. Okay. Um, interesting runner in that race. Um, I, I think it's. I think it was. It was actually second in the race. Shanro. Uh, last year he's coming back. He bombed out the last day, but he, he did win at Chester and he won at Galway as well. He's he's um, rate one hundred and forty one, and he's flat form. He's still very very feasible. He's big big price in the race as well. Yeah, if twenty to one with twenty to one top price bet three to five. Okay, and just a brief mention of the Hurst Park handicap chase for which Boot Hill six to four favourite. Corrigine Rock Falls, St. Segal. I quite like Fun and Bull Civilo in that race, even though Boot Hill thumped him first time, but it was his first run after a wind up and he was given quite a positive ride. I thought he'll run better this weekend. Yeah, I'm all over Boot Hill. I'll leave that bit to the best bit of the weekend. Stand Lovely. by. Stand by. Okay, uh, I think that's it for our, our preview of the week ahead. Now, before we get into the lads' best bets of the upcoming week, uh, just to let you know of a free-to-play Six Horses Challenge. It is available every weekend with prize pools available for five and four correct predictions, as well as a jackpot for all six. T's and C's apply. Time for the best bets of the weekend from Steve and Johnny. Uh, Steve, as you sort of alluded to... Uh, your best bet of the weekend. I'll let you go first. Yeah, I'm, I'm not usually one to go six to four in handicaps, but I think Boot Hill is is a fantastic bet for this weekend. He's three from three in handicap chases with his only defeats over fences coming in the Henry VIII novices chase behind the 166 rated John Bond, <laughs> um, the Lightning novices chase behind the 157 rated Tommy's Oscar, and then third behind Solo in the Pendle. Um, he was really impressive over this course and distance mm. on his reappearance. I loved that performance. That was off a mark of 149. The handicap has raised him six pounds for that four length success. It's worth remembering first flow was second that day. He's won a grade one, the Clarence House at Ascot. So he, he was back to form that day. Um, I think six pounds is, is very, very lenient for a four length success. And yeah, around six to four with bet 365. I think Boot Hill will win on Saturday. Okay, Hurst Park, handicap chase, Boot Hill, six to four with bet three, six, five. That is Steve's best bet of the weekend. Johnny? Yeah, it's it's a short enough price as well. Um, so our double would pay nine to two, something like that. But I am going to go with Brave Man's Game in the big one at Haydock, just at the price is 11 to eight. Um, I, I find it a little bit tricky. I'll probably end up fancying something at Dundalk. We don't have declaration at the moment. Ireland at the moment, you couldn't tip Anthony Innes. Um, at 11 to 8, Brave Man's game, I don't see any flaws. The race mm. is probably going to cut up a little bit as well. Um, yeah, and I, I don't think the ground's going to be next to use. I think he'll go off odds on. So, um, not a bad double, hopefully, for the punters this weekend. Okay, Boot Hill and Brave Man's game. I want Wackle to run well at a big price, so we're both on that. It's 20 to 1 uh, with Bet365 for that stairs handicap hurdle at, uh, at Haydock on the weekend. Um, well, thank you both very much. Um, I think before we go, I was at Cheltenham, obviously, on the weekend. I know everybody's been racing. And even though we're enjoying what's going on, the spectre of what happened to what has happened to Graham Lee still remains 
uh, over the sport. So I know that we mentioned it last week, but I think it's worth reiterating. We're sending our very best wishes uh, to Graham and his family. And of course, there is a GoFundMe page. If anybody wants to get involved, uh, please do. Uh, so hopefully better news in the offing in the future. So we send our very best wishes to he and his family. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been a real joy to reflect on all the great racing and also look forward uh, to what we've got coming up this week. Hopefully, uh, there are a few winners along the way. Steve's been in really good form, so <laughs> hopefully that continues. No pressure on Johnny um, and whack all each way. Uh, that is it for this week's episode of Racing Weekly, brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Thank you very much to Steve Ryder and Johnny Ward for joining me on this episode. As always, if you've liked what you heard or seen, um, then... In, if you want to leave us a very kind comment uh, in the review section on Apple Podcasts uh, or in the comment section on YouTube, it would be much appreciated. Uh, next week, we're going to be back looking ahead to the Winter Carnival at Newbury, and Tanya Stevenson will be joining Steve and myself for that. But for now, from the Racing Weekly team, bye-bye.